en esta computadora. Well, welcome uh, to the International Medical Geology Association webinar. Today we will have an interesting presentation, interac interaction between micro and nanoparticles of volcanic ash with synthetic long fluids by Dr. Benedetto Schiavo. Uh, Benedetto is a young doctor in earth science and currently a postdoc at the Institute of Geophysics from the National Autonomous University of Mexico. His academic background includes a bachelor degree in geological science and a master's degree in geological sciences and technologies obtained from the University of Palermo in Italy and a PhD in earth sciences from uh, our university, uh, UNAM, Mexico. He developed several lines of research focused on monitoring and studying volcanic gases, air pollution, emerging pollutants, heavy metals in the environment, nanoparticles and their effects on human health. He has published 20 articles in indexed journals and several participations in national and international conferences. We uh, welcome Dr. Benedetto and are very grateful for your participation. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for this introduction. Uh, it's a privilege to be here today. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, today I will present some uh, results uh, of the of the of a study focused on the interaction between micro and nanoparticles of volcanic ash with synthetic lung fluids. In this study, ash samples were, were collected from a recent eruption uh, of the Popocatépetl volcano, a Mexican volcano located relatively near to Mexico City in Mexico. Further in the presentation, uh, I will share more information about this volcano and its geographical uh, location. Uh, first, uh, where does this study begin? A study begin, uh, uh, we start with uh, one question, actually two science questions. First question, how do these micro and nanoparticles of volcanic ash behave in contact with lung biological fluid? And another question is, does this behavior change with exposure time? Uh, okay, before answering this uh, question, I will show an introduction and a state of art of this topic. Uh, so why study nanoparticle, microparticle, or uh, submicrometrical particle? According to the literature, uh, nanoparticles in general act as a precursor to form larger particles uh, that can influence climate at a global scale and are responsible for a cooling effect and global warming. Compared to the coarse particles uh, with the, uh, that have we a resident, a resident time uh, in the atmosphere um, of about, uh, for example, one week, is depending on the size of this coarse particle, larger particle, nanoparticles have much longer resident time in the atmosphere uh, due to their high probability of resuspension. Micro and nanoparticles have different sizes, and generally this size is defined between ranges. Uh, in the case of microparticles, uh, MPS, uh, are particle dispersion or uh, solid a particle with a size in a range of 1 to 1000 micrometer. And uh, nanoparticles, NPS, represent solid or dispersed particles in the size range of 1 to 100 uh, nanometers. Um, in the figure on the left, in this part of this presentation, uh, we can observe the difference in the si in size between air, between sand, uh, um, particle, coarse particle, and fine particle. Coarse particle in general as defined as PM10 and fine particle as defined as PM2.5 and uh, uh, nanoparticle or ultra, ultra fine particle is the same, it's a particle smaller than 100 uh, nanometers. And in the, on the other hand, in the figure uh, on the right of this presentation, we can see um, how, how, depending on the size, the particle can travel, travel 
or remain in suspension for a short or long time. Uh, in this figure, in particular, the smaller particles are represented by particles smaller than 20 uh, micrometers. And in this case, this particle remains in suspension for a long uh, time, for example, um, uh, hour or days. Uh, therefore, considering uh, considering smaller particle, for example, uh, sub microparticle or nanoparticle, the suspension is much longer, even months or years. In the definition uh, um, in the, of this range, micro and nanoparticle, is missing the range between 100 nanometer and one micrometer. In this case, uh, according to the literature, the particle in the range between uh, same, uh, 100 nanometer and one micrometer it is defined as submicrometric particles. So uh, now let's see the properties of these nanoparticles. Uh, nanoparticles are characterized in general by very small size, particularly optical uh, properties, and large surface to volume ratio. This is a uh, this more important characteristic of these ultrafine or uh, nanoparticles. Um, uh, the, the reason behind nanomaterials exhibit such specific properties is attributed to their size. In this figure, we can see the difference between nanoparticle or ultrafine particle and PM10, quartz particle, and PM2.5, uh, uh, so fine uh, particle. Um, we, as we can see from this figure, uh, with the same mass, nanoparticles have a greater number of particles than quartz and fine particle, for example. And another difference of this, um, of this, uh, between these particles uh, is they uh, have different sides and are a different health risk. For example, PM10, quartz particle, uh, are in general are filtered by our proximal airways, so in the upper uh, respiratory tract, and may irritate, irritate skin and mucosa. PM2.5, uh, fine, fine, part fine particles, can reach our peripheral airways, but cannot enter in our systemic circulation. And finally, our um, nanoparticles may enter in the systemic circulation and have another uh, character important characteristic. characteristic. Nanoparticles have the ability to absorb toxic material on surface, on their surface. For example, uh, toxic material as uh, metal or metalloid or organic uh, compound. Um, and then um, uh, on the right in this um, in this presentation, we can see a list of the specific feature attribute that can um, that can uh, change at nanoscale. For example, at nanoscale can change can change mechanical properties, can change thermal, electric, magnetic, catalytic, and optical property, as well as melting point and diffusivity. For example, uh, in the in the literature. Copper element, uh, the element of copper is considered a soft material, but copper nanoparticle for a smaller than 50 nanometers is considered considered is a very hard material with drastical uh, difference in malleability and ductility compared compared to the bulk copper. This is a uh, important pro. There are uh, there are important properties of these uh, of these uh, uh, nanoparticles. So, uh, in the previous slide, we see we saw the possible size of the nanoparticle and their attribute and characteristic. Now, where do these ultrafine or nanoparticle come from? Nanoparticle come from uh, natural sources or anthropogenic sources. Uh, in the in this case, it's, this is a flow diagram. Uh, of the possible origin of uh, this uh, natural nanoparticle of anthropogenic nanoparticle. For example, natural nanoparticle come from uh, biogeochemical cycling, uh, sea spray, uh, forest fire, uh, volcanic activity of dust storm. And anthropogenic nanoparticle come from uh, vehicular traffic, uh, industries emissions, uh, biomass burning, uh, pesticide or fertilizer, for example. Some author uh, estimate that um, about 90% of the particles present in the atmosphere are from natural origins. 
And uh, many authors report that volcanic activity and dust storm are the major emitter of nanoparticles into, uh, into the environment, uh, the, into the atmosphere. Uh, this figure on the on the left is a resume of the possible origin of uh, nanoparticle into the environment, into the into the atmosphere. Once generate this uh, nanoparticle, uh, can form aerosol or colloidal suspension. And for example, this aerosol, once formed, can be deposited uh, on the hair surface by dry or wet uh, deposition and become a constituent or uh, soil uh, of soil or end uh, sediment in our earth, uh, earth surface. Okay. Considering uh, anthropogenic nanoparticle, vehicular traffic in urban area is consider the main source of sources of the nanoparticle and as it is known exposure to nanoparticle is a risk for human health uh, human uh, well, the people that living in the um, urban environment especially in mega cities uh, this is considered outdoor uh, the source of outdoor uh, nanoparticle uh, so mainly vehicular traffic the source of indoor ultrafine or nanoparticle are uh, mainly paint and cooking, but um, nanoparticle that can generate uh, from, for example, vehicular traffic or industry or construction or secunda secondary aerosol um, as, or secondary or inorganic aerosol may enter in our indoor spaces, for example, our, uh, our, our uh, house. Uh, so, um, uh, let's uh, let's talk about the volcanic emission. Now let's talk about the volcanic emission. As we know, volcanoes during their activity phase phases emitted gases and ashes in the atmosphere, into the atmosphere. The amount of the gas and ash emitted depend greatly on the eruptive phase of this of this volcano, uh, moderate eruption or strong eruption or passive desgasification, depend on the activity of this volcano. It has been estimated that 9% of the world population lives within 100 kilometers of an active volcano. And this percent continue to increase over the years in many, many regions, for example, uh, in Central America or in um, uh, Africa. Volcanic eruption can produce a wide range of uh, hazards. For example, volcanic ash can affect public health, can affect infrastructure, can affect air traffic, and can affect uh, economy and society. And um, volcanic ash uh, uh, can affect uh, so uh, many people around uh, the around the world. And in this case, the size of this nano of the volcanic ash particle uh, is highly variable. Uh, for example, can range from millimeter to nanometer. And this volcanic ash can affect many people around the world because of the large areas that can be uh, covered by the volcanic uh, by the volcanic ash fall. Many studies uh, have been published uh, in relation to the damage caused by exposure to the volcanic uh, ash. For example, uh, for the first uh, first um, published article have found correlation between exposure to the volcanic ash and respiratory disease. Another study have found a correlation between chronic exposure to the volcanic ash, so long, long, long term exposure, and between and, uh, thyroid cancer, cardiovascular disease and neuropsychiatric complication. Another study have um, have found a correlation uh, between uh, more respiratory complication, for example, in children. In general, children, uh, together to older people and people that can um, have respiratory complication, are more sensitive to the contamination, even the contamination of the volcanic ashes. And finally, a recent article have uh, found a correlation between um, chronic exposure to the volcanic ash and inflammatory syndrome, especially lung inflammatory uh, syndrome. Uh, this, um, in, in this case, this experiment uh, were realized in laboratory using mice. So in this case, it's called in vivo uh, analysis. <laughs>
we already know uh, that uh, smaller pa uh, pa particle smaller than one micrometer um, and ultra fine particle nanoparticle can easily reach the deepest part of the lung the alveolar region and in the alveolar region depending on the composition of this uh, particle soluble particles are dissolved and enter in our syst systemic circulation and on the uh, insoluble uh, particle or nanoparticle remain in the alveoli uh, for, for, for a long time and, uh, and generate uh, what is called oxidative stress. Oxidative stress is a disturbance in the balance between the um, production of ROS, uh, reactive oxygen species, free radicals, and antioxidant, uh, antioxidant uh, defense. Uh, the uncontrolled production of ROS generate oxidative stress, and oxidative stress can generate DNA damage, interaction with the antioxidant uh, system, membrane deterioration, and metabolism uh, alteration. Uh, actually, there are many uh, methods for uh, evaluate health risk. Uh, one of these methods, uh, in this case, inhalation health risk. In this case, in this case, uh, one of these methods is apply the um, uh, equation developed by the US EPA, uh, United States Environmental Protection uh, Agency. Uh, another method is to determine the bioaccessibility uh, of the metal contained in this uh, particle or, or nanoparticle into synthetic lung fluid. In this case, uh, we use um, Gumball solution and ALF solution. Gumball solution is the lung fluid in the external part of the, the fluid of the um, our lung, and uh, it's a, a neutral um, uh, solution, pH uh, 7. And ALF solution is the a solution that simulates the internal uh, condition of the uh, alveolar macrophage and is an acid solution, uh, pH 4.5. Uh, Another method to that um, to be um, evaluate health risk is to define and um, um, the amount, for example, of nanoparticle. Uh, that may enter in our systemic uh, circulation and study their fate and behavior in contact with lung fluid. Uh, this is, um, um, in this case, this is a flow diagram um, related to the pathway of uh, nanoparticle in our respiratory tract. Uh, due to their small, uh, very small size of this nanoparticle, uh, nanoparticle can diffuse and accumulate in our alveolar region and enter in our cardiovascular system and other internal uh, organs of uh, tissues, for example. Uh, several studies provide evidence that, uh, that nanoparticles uh, of 20 nanometer uh, bypass more of our mechanism defense and uh, easily are deposited in our alveolar regions of the lung. Our body um, have, uh, has some defense mechanism or clearance mechanism against this nanoparticle. One of these mechanisms is found in our uh, upper respiratory tract, uh, mainly in the trachea, bronchi, and upper uh, bronchioles. And its name is mucus, a complex fluid containing mucin that protects our body in general from environmental influence and have the ability to remove inhalate uh, nanoparticles. Uh, another uh, defense mechanism or clearance mechanism slower than mucociliary clearance is associated to the uh, alveolar macrophage. Uh, but uh, as we, we say, alveolar ma macrophage is a slower process in this case, a very slower process compared to mucus mucociliary uh, clearance. Um, so now we know that soluble nanoparticles are dissolved uh, uh, in the lung fluid, for example, Gamble solution or uh, ILF solution, and pass into, uh, into our circular, circular cardiovascular system. And insoluble nanoparticles are removed slowly via phagocytosis by macrophages. So insoluble nanoparticles uh, cause in the lung uh, tissue, tissue damage, inflammation, and lung and lung uh, cancer, depending on the term of uh, the long term uh, of the exposure, for, for, for example. 
that now we know that long term exposure of a nanoparticle, that means nanoparticle remain of long time in our alveolar region, can cause lung cancer. And this lung cancer, depending uh, depend on the particle deposition rate, the elimination rate, and the residence time of this nanoparticle in our respiratory tract. So, uh, from now on, now on we uh, we can talk about uh, our um, our study. Uh, I present part of our result of the, of the recently publication um, of. On the behavior of the of the nanoparticle containing in in the volcanic ash, uh, in this case volcanic ash collected in the Popocatépetl volcano. Uh, this is a satellite view of this volcano located in the central part of, of Mexico. Uh, this its name is meaning uh, Smoky Mountain. It's high uh, approximately uh, five thousand four. 100 meter above sea level. Uh, it's a constant activity since 1994, and uh, in in their in their um, in its uh, recently uh, um, eruption history, um, uh, I've registered numerous lava dome growth and destruction. And uh, another characteristic of this volcano, and it's uh, it's located between two megacities. Uh, Mexico City, 20 million inhabitants, 60 kilometer distance from the volcano, and Puebla City, Puebla de Zaragoza, 7 million inhabitants and 45 kilometer distance from the, uh, the, the volcano. Uh, first, we have analyzed the total concentration of these uh, ash samples. In this case, we have analyzed uh, metal uh, such as uh, vanadium, chromium, uh, manganese, uh, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, cadmium and lead. Why we study uh, this metal? In the literature, this metal is uh, uh, metal and metalloid are associated to the are the male, mainly metal associated to oxidative stress. Uh, once we have analyzed the total concentration of this metal, uh, this total concentration allows us to arrive uh, at the calculation of the bioaccessibility. Uh, bioaccessibility is the fraction that can be uh, dissolved by our body fluid, in this case, in, the, in our case, lung fluid, and therefore are available for absorption. But before going to see uh, the bioaccessibility results, we try to calculate the inhalation health risk using the equation by USEPA. Uh, in this case, the um, uh, final result, considering uh, all of this metal, um, was smaller than uh, one. So in this case, um, uh, the result was that there is no health risk, health hazard in the inhalation of our ash. Uh, sample following the equation by US EPA. Uh, but the result of the lung fluid, the lung bioaccessibility in lung fluid, uh, Gamble solution and uh, ALF uh, solution, artificial lysosomal fluid solution, return that some metals contain, uh, containing in the ash, in our ash fold, are bioaccessible. Uh, so, therefore, constitute a health risk. For example, in Gamble solution, in the plot on the, on the left, yeah, we 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 can see that copper is quite bioaccessible and reaching values greater than fifty percent. On the other hand, in our plot on the on the right ALF plot, many metal uh, are found bioaccessible. In general, all metal in this case in this case are uh, bioaccessible, um, mainly uh, copper, nickel, uh, zinc, and cadmium, and in the smaller percentage, uh, lead vanadium, chromium, uh, manganese, iron, and cobalt. So what percentage is considering a health risk of this bioaccessibility? The answer is that if there is a minimum percentage of the bioaccessibility, lung bioaccessibility in our case, exists a possible health risk. Uh, because it means that there are dissolved particle and metal um, in, the, in our ash sample that will enter in our circulatory system. So um, now, uh, after calculating the bioaccessibility, uh, we move to the SAM analysis. SAM is a scanning electron microscope. 
the same return the elemental composition with percentage by weight of certain mineral found in our sample, ash sample. In this case, it's possible to appreciate in the red circle uh, how submicrometric particle and nanoparticle are aggregate with larger particle. Nanoparticle have the ability to aggregate with other or other nanomaterial, for example, aggregation uh, between nanoparticle and other nanoparticle, or the aggregation with larger particle. So nanoparticle with larger uh, particle. It's a specific ability of the ultrafine of these or our uh, nanoparticles. Uh, this is another case we can that where we can appreciate uh, the smaller particle aggregate with larger uh, particle uh, in the red in the red circle uh, with the same of the other case. Now uh, we use the same uh, software called particle metric software uh, in order to determine the particle distribution size of our ash or ash fall uh, sample. This software recognized, uh, starting to the, our raw image, in this case, uh, this image, or um, this same uh, image, this software recognized the particle present in the specific image, and in, in, uh, the, uh, the figure of color is the software that recognized uh, different uh, particles uh, from the raw image. And finally, uh, the software calculates the e circle equivalent diameter of this uh, of this particle. And this plot is the final. <laughs> this plot is the final results of the, the the of the software, the particle metric software. In this uh, in this case, in this example, the software recognizes particle up to a diameter of approximately uh, four hundred sixty five nanometers. And uh, in average. Uh, ever recognize a circle equivalent diameter of 1.66 micrometers, a circularity of 0, um, uh, 0.68. And uh, this is a result, the, this plot, uh, considering four images and a total of 900 uh, particles studied by this, uh, this software. This is another case, another ash, uh, ash sample. Uh, in this case, uh, the, the, the software recognized particle up to uh, 20, uh, to 200 uh, nanometer, so uh, too close to the range of uh, nanoparticles. And uh, in this case, with the average value of circle equivalent diameter of 1.01 micrometer, circularity of 0 0.78, and it, this is our result in, the, it results in this case, considering four image and a total of around uh, 1,000 uh, particles. So um, at this point, we uh, we perform further analysis of the particle distribution size um, in contact in contact uh, in contact with uh, lung uh, lung synthetic uh, fluid. In this case, we have used um, a technique uh, technique called uh, DLS dynamic light uh, scattering. Uh, this technique measure the size of particle in fluid. For example, um, it can be used with uh, distilled water. In our case, we have analyzed the particle distribution size, the fate and the behavior of this uh, ash sample, the nanoparticle in the ash sample, uh, with a gamble solution and a ALF uh, solution. Uh, this technique can measure the particle size in the range from 0 0.6 nanometer, so smaller uh, than one nanometer, uh, to six micrometer, a wide range of measurements. And the results is very interesting. Um, in this case, the analysis uh, in two different uh, lung solution um, was performed at time zero and 20, uh, after 20 hour exposure to uh, ash, uh, ash fall. Uh, uh, if we see the first uh, plot, uh, Gamble solution in this case, GS, at time zero, we detect particle with a diameter of 248 nanometer. But after 24 hour exposure, we detect larger particle with a diameter of about 963 uh, nanometer. Hence, there have been uh, detected aggregation 
process in this case between this uh, particle in this specific fluid after 24 hours. Particle with different diameter uh, were detected uh, at uh, zero time in the ALF, uh, ALF uh, solution, including particle of uh, seven, uh, 79 uh, nanometer, so nanoparticles, uh, particle um, of uh, 291 nanometer, and particle of uh, uh, 5 uh, micrometers. A wide range of particles were recognized at time zero in ILF solution. But after two hour, uh, 24 hours of exposure, we have recognized this aggregation process in this case. In Gambon solution, aggregation process. And in uh, ILF solution, we have recognized a disaggregation process. Um, in this case, uh, we have recognized even smaller particles. In this, for example, particle of uh, 55 uh, nanometers, a uh, particle of 184 nanometer, and particle of uh, 460 uh, nanometers. Probably the difference between uh, aggregation and disaggregation process uh, occur uh, due to the different nature of this, of this synthetic fluid. One fluid is a neutral solution, and other, another fluid is acid uh, solution. Another process that can affect the aggregation process uh, is called corona protein uh, effect that can affect our uh, results, final results. Um, part of these results have been uh, published in this article, Characterization and Polydispersity of Volcanic Ash Nanoparticle in Synthetic Lung Fluid. If uh, someone is interested to read this, uh, this article and have been published in the journal Toxic from MDPI. In conclusion, a uh, larger quantity of microparticle, submicrometric particle, and nanoparticle was found in our volcanic ash uh, from, uh, in this case, uh, one volcano, Popocatépetl volcano. Um, we have recognized uh, in, in after 24 hours uh, aggregation and disaggregation process in our synthetic loom fluid. Aggregation process in, in Gumball solution and disaggregation process in ALF a solution. And the particles have, um, uh, now we know that the particles have a different phase and behavior depending on the exposure time and lung fluid. Uh, consider uh, the future work, uh, we want to collect more ash sample. Uh, that, uh, we want to increase the number of uh, ash sample. In this case, we have collected and studied uh, five ash sample, and we want to include sample from uh, different eruption over the years, we want to compare our results uh, relating to the particle distribution size with other techniques, for example, nano tracking analysis, in order to confirm the particle uh, size, our particle distribution size. And finally, uh, we want to carry out experiments with alveolar macrophage cell line, so in vivo analysis, uh, to assess potential cell damage of ash samples. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Benedetto. Very, very nice, very interesting presentation. Thank and you. Very informative. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if uh, Eduardo has uh, any question for you. Hello, Eduardo. Um, hello. Hello. It's good to see you. Uh, a, a great uh, exposition. By I in the moment I don't have any question. Okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this presentation will be posted in our website, IMGA mm -hmm. website. Uh, please, uh, with uh, say to your colleagues that it, it will be there and uh, also the article is uh, open access so mm -hmm. if you can if you are interested you can access to the, the manuscript okay. mm -hmm. well 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 uh, thank you very much and we hope to see you everybody in monterey in two yes. weeks so we share experiences we will have 
surely a very great uh, scientific and personal time. Uh, thank you, Elena, for organizing. Thank you so much this, uh, and congratulations, Benedetto, for your thank you. <laughs> uh, very interesting. See you all. Bye bye. See you.